Hello, friends. I'm so gonna hit my head on that, and that's gonna be okay. We're just gonna have to deal with me hitting my head on the camera. Okay, so we are now live. Woohoo! Very, very exciting. No problem. I really enjoy hosting. Um, hi, Linda. We're just going to wait a few minutes so that we can um, populate, let some people catch up with us, get all logged into YouTube and whatnot. So hi, everybody. I hope you're having a lovely watercolor Wednesday. Hello from the UK. Hello, I'm currently broadcasting from New Jersey. We are having, uh, it's a warm day. You know, a little chill in the air from that Arctic zone thing that decided to come through. But yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. So yeah. Hi, welcome. Hi, Jessica. Let's see who else is on here. There's Linda and Betty, Annette, Kira, Kay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Watercolor Wednesday. Mm. You have to pardon me. I might get like a little sneezy from allergies. I have the window open because it's just beautiful air and. Uh, Hopefully, hopefully, yeah, no one's going to be cutting their lawn. Hi, Julie. Hi, Annie. Ooh, Hollywood and Canada. Delaware. Oklahoma. 9 p.m. where Hazy Jane is. Hi, Rebecca. Um, the muse should be located down below. We should have a link to that. Um, her name is Susan Cologne from, um, from the Sketchy app. And also down below there is uh, a code that you can click. It's BOGO80 so that you can buy one, get one watercolor class, 80% off discount, which ends tonight. So, you know, sort of that Cinderella rule. So, oh my gosh, yes, Jessica, I have to say Drawing with France has been so amazing. I love, love, love drawing with her. She's just, she has such wonderful style and it's just so soothing to listen to her too. So, yeah, watercolor definitely is my jam too. Oh my gosh, allergies are just like driving me nuts. <laughs> Hello, Raul from the Dominican Republic. You know, once all the uh, the craziness, what's going on these days is over, we shall have to like get some sketchy meetups so the uh, people who are close to each other can can get you know get together and do some little live drawing sessions. That seems like a really fun idea. And I'm lucky because France, she lives uh, about maybe 40 minutes away from where I am. So maybe I can actually meet her in person. I would be really excited to do that. So I'm just going to give another minute for everybody to kind of get on and hang out with us. It's like a nice time to sit back and have a cup of tea or, you know, a nice cool glass of water or you know, whatever your preference is. <laughs> so, yeah. I almost drank uh, my paint water again. I'm really good at doing that. Anybody else have that problem? My painters out there, you know, accidentally drinking their paint water. <laughs> Hello from Texas. Uh, we're in New Jersey. Um, I'm in Cinnaminson, New Jersey, so I'm like close to like Cherry Hill area, uh, Morristown, um, you know, about 15 minutes outside of Philadelphia. If I just jump across the Betsy Ross Bridge, I'm like, pew. 
Hello, Philadelphia. Which is fun. I do like Philadelphia. Hello from Seattle. Aw. Arabia, um, you're 25 years old and you haven't reached your your full potential in drawing. Well, I can't say that I really hit my full potential in painting and drawing and I'm still constantly working on it. Um, I just gotta say, keep on going at it and do one of those challenges like the 30 day challenge or any of those. Cause um, yeah, just drawing every day, practicing every single day is just, it's what can really, really help you out there. Um, and I mean, I probably, I don't think I really hit my peak in, I haven't hit my peak in watercolor yet, but I didn't really start feeling comfortable with my drawing and my watercolor probably until like I hit maybe 32, maybe 33, I don't know, like a few years ago when I did a, um, a solo show at my local gallery in Haddonfield. Um, I did about 50 face portraits. Um, we called it Faces of Haddonfield. And I mean, after spending a year drawing almost every single day, like, that's what really hit home for me. Um, so don't worry about it, you know, just, just keep on doing your thing and keep on practicing and, you know, eventually you'll get there. It'll happen. Um, oh, sorry. Now you got that in front of my face. Let me see if I can angle this up a little bit. And tie in that. All right. So, um, I think we've had a pretty decent amount of time for people to sort of catch up with us and, uh, yeah, let's get this party started. Um, so as you see, I already did a pre-scratch of um, Susan's face. I'm very familiar with painting her. I have no idea it was just at the door. Small child. Um, so, yeah. Um, sorry, just total brain fart. Hold on. I just gotta do something. Ooh, gotta go. Okay, okay. Leave. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. One of the perks of parenthood. Um, so yeah, what was I? So yeah, I was saying um, I'm very familiar with Susan's face. I've painted her before in the past. And um, I just, I really love her features. Uh, one thing that I really, really love about her is that she just has like these strong cheekbones. And in all of her photographs, um, she's capable of getting really incredible shadows. Um, not just shadows for the sake of shadows, but shadows that really show off her features and really accentuate them. And that's what really attracts me to um, my photographs that I use for inspiration. So, you know, that's it's just my personal preference. I really enjoy that. So, yeah, let, let me talk less and do more painting. So first thing I'm going to do is just wet down my paper. And I want it to be not puddly, just like glossy. But see how I have like droopy puddles down here? It's like whoa, a little bit too much. So if I move my canvas around, not my canvas, this isn't canvas, Lauren, this is paper. Um, I don't want to have anything flowing anywhere. I just want to have a nice gloss. And apparently I did a horrible job stretching my paper last night because you can see it's buckling in places. Ugh, the horror. <laughs> so yeah, let's give that a moment to absorb. So one of the reasons why I pre-wet my paper is just so that um, I always start with wet on wet techniques and I just want color to sort of spread all over the place and give me some beautiful textures and whatnot. Um, the brushes I'm going to be using today is I'm going to use um, my uh, number eight. This is a red sable. Um, I'm also going to use my number two rounds. Um, I have a number one. This one is a rigger, um, which is very, very long which I absolutely love because then you can start pulling some beautiful shapes there. And I'm probably also going to be using a number four. So um, honestly, 
if um, like you only have like a number eight paintbrush or a six, like you, you can really accomplish a lot on this scale with just those. Um, I dropped my rag. Oh well, this one. And then I always have some paper towel on hand to blot my brushes so I can have more control. Um, my palette today is I'm primarily going to stick with my really intense colors here. I'm going to be sticking with Quinacridone Pink by Daniel Smith. Um, I think this one here is my favorite blue. It's very like a cyanish blue, which it would be um, phthalo blue, uh, the green shade. And then I'm going to be using, as you can see, I use a lot of this, my Azo Yellow by N. Brown. Those are some of my absolute favorites. And hold on, let me highlight this comment here. Uh, Jessica, yeah, watercolor blocks are definitely one of my best friends too. Um, but I wanted to, all my watercolor blocks that I currently have are like huge. And they really, I just wanted to do like an 8 by 10 because if I did like a 12 by 16 or whatever the heck it is, um, I don't think I would be able to finish in time. Like, what, what am I saying? I never finish in time. <laughs> so yeah. All right, that feels pretty good so far for me. So let's get this party started. My handy dandy arm sock to protect the paper from me and protect me from the paint. Oops, I just threw a brush at myself. some as I yellow first. Okay, and I'm going to start dropping this in the highlight areas because I like um, using really bright intense colors there. Just everywhere um, for the ladies and gentlemen who like to do highlighting and contouring, I'm just going to be popping this where you would be doing the highlight, those shimmery colors of my makeup. Okay, this over here. Um, all right, so that's really pretty. Um, and then I'm gonna pull some of this and pop this here because she has a little bit of highlight there. And let's grab some of that Quinn Pink. I'm going to mix that with a little bit of my blue. A little bit more pink. And it creates the most lovely violet. Look at that. Um, a lot of people find that creating violets are extremely difficult, um, but that's because you need to know your color theory. If you are trying to use a warm red um, and you mix that with your blue, it because the red, a warmer the red is, the closer it pushes to orange. And then if you mix an orangish color with blue, you start getting this really weird like brownish shade rather than violet, and that's never. So I'm going to drop this in to all of the shadow areas. And I really want to keep my edges loose, so occasionally I will just tickle them with little bits of water. And so I'm just going to do this on the more extreme shadows. So I'll put this over here so you can see. There's a little piece of tape stuck on it. So you can see here, these deeper, more extreme shadows, that's where I'm going to be dropping in my purples. So I'm going to tuck some of that in there, and tuck some in here, really have fun cutting those shapes. And then definitely underneath her nose, but whoop, a little too much there. 
was just a lot better than that. Sometimes it can be so intimidating when you first start putting down colors. Um, but always remember that watercolors will dry a little bit lighter. So, is there a bird in the room or is it just me? Um, there is a bird's nest right outside of my window. So if that like starts to drive people crazy, just let me know. Um, somebody in my neighborhood currently is mowing the lawn or using some sort of yard equipment. So I'm just once again getting those major areas blocked in. I also want to get some of that on her upper lip. The upper lip is usually always in the shadow just because the way it is. And then the lower lip will have like a little shadow on it here. And then underneath is usually the shadow that defines the bottom lip. Okay, Flavio, I'm glad that you don't mind the bird noises. Um, it's really adorable little family of birds. Um, I think they're finches, but they made a nest in the tree right outside my window and there's like this ivy growing up the tree and their nest is right in there. And they're a very noisy couple of birds. And um, I guess it has to be the little boy bird because usually they're the most spectacular with the plumage and color but he has this little red head um a little red face and he's just so noisy i really like him i should name him something i'll let my daughter do that oh um really good comment here let me just make that a little bigger so K.A. Foster says, I'm guessing we're supposed to draw the muse before we got here. Um, you don't have to if you want to just sketch along with me. Um, I'm sorry. I like sometimes I do like some drawing on screen, but then I usually don't have time to finish my watercolor um, because I always run out of time because that's just what I do. So I apologize. Um, for anybody who, you know, just came out here blank and, um, so sounds like a purple finch. Okay. I will have to look them up. My husband's going to be getting, um, my kids one of those bird books so that they can go through with a checklist and, um, figure out what all of the local birds are. Um, so as you can see here, my paper is drier here and it's not flowing. The paint isn't flowing. So I'm just going to wet that edge with a clean brush. And cause I really don't want any hard edges yet because I'm still in such the baby stages. And for anybody who's really intimidated um, by doing their sketches and getting proportions correct, um, you can like you don't have to worry about it too much when you're first starting to learn and when you're doing watercolor. And if it's really hugely intimidating to you, like don't be afraid to use like a gentle grid um, to do your sketch, like perhaps on another piece of paper. It's always difficult to sketch on watercolor paper because if you um, if you tend to erase a lot. Um, you can ruin the sizing on the paper. So one thing that I let my students do, my students who have absolutely no confidence in drawing whatsoever, is I'll let them use a printout. We'll put some carbon paper on the back of it, and I'll let them trace in some of the general features. Excuse me. And then remove the carbon paper and then go back in um, and buy observation and uh, freehand to put in more of the details and things like that. Or if you want to do a sketch in your sketchbook first and then use some graphite paper um, to transfer um, drawing your drawing onto your um, watercolor paper. I know some other artists uh, will project the image onto the watercolor before they start. There's this one really intense landscape artist. Oh my gosh, he's, he's completely amazing. His name, his name is Terry. He's from France. Um, but he does these really super detailed 
um, cityscapes. And um, just so he's capable of getting all that information on there with a, about a bunch of erasing and having to drop like grid lines on there, he will um, project it. So, you know, if you use a camera Lucinda, if you end up using tracing, if you end up using a grid, if you end up using a protractor and a compass and a, and a ruler to get your, your drawings more accurate, you know, whatever it takes, just draw. <laughs> um, so, um, Linda, uh, she says, how can we get the muse ahead of time? Um, I guess what we can do is, uh, sketchy, we can probably work together in getting the muse, especially when I do watercolor Wednesdays out like a few days ahead of time, or maybe I could post it on my Instagram or onto sketchy art school. Um, so I will try to do that or do some more on screen drawing. So my apologies for that. I am so sorry. <laughs> Right, so I do have a little bit of blooming going on here. Um, you can see it, how it's sort of starting to spread, but that's okay. Like some watercolor painters don't like that. Um, I don't mind it. One way to control that is just making sure that you're using um, an even ratio of pigment to water. One way that you can correct it is while it's still damp, you can just sort of tease and tickle those edges and that will help correct some of that. Um, so yeah, my talking a lot here, that is also part of uh, me just letting things dry so that, um, you know, I don't have to be impatient and watch things dry. So Flavia says, I'm trying to get the discount on your course, but it says discount code isn't valid. Hmm. Uh, we will have to email Sketchy about that and make sure that code is valid. Make sure that you're using the one that's directly in the link below, the description below BOGO80. Um, so hopefully um, someone can get on that like as soon as possible. All right, I wanna start defining some more harder shapes. So I absolutely love this shadow down here. I'm gonna tuck that up and get this down. I broke my iPad two days ago, so like there's a dead zone that it like won't let me. I have trouble like zooming with things. Um, so if you see me struggling with it, I have to put on a new screen. All right, let me mix a little bit more paint with this. I'm bringing this up. Here's some sort of other machinery in the background. What are my neighbors up to? So um, let me highlight this. Boop, boop. Um, you're afraid to use watercolor when drawing the people that you paint. Um, I mean, you have to remember that it's only paper um, and you can't treat your drawings as if they're so precious. And if you really do want to keep that drawing, like I said, you can always transfer it onto another piece of paper by using some sort of tracing method or a grid or something like that. So then when you do go to watercolor it, um, it'll feel less precious to you. Um, and I'm, what I mean by that, you'll feel less attached to it and less like a failure if it doesn't come out the way that you want it. So that that's my suggestion for getting that. Okay, so Linda says, do I have any thoughts about using a handheld dryer? Um, I really enjoy doing a handheld dryer, a hair dryer, or a heat gun, whatever you have, um, to get things to dry faster. The only time I don't do that is if um, I use a little bit of sea salt on my paper because that really needs time to start pooling the paint and the water. Um, well, it pulls the water and the paint just sort of goes for a ride with it. Um, but if you use a hair dryer or a hand dryer with that, um, one of the, like the heat guns, 
then unfortunately it will freeze that effect in the moment where it, where it is. And so you won't get the fullness of um, how crazy and gorgeous using salt on your watercolors would be. So you won't get perhaps the desired texture. But other than that, oh, I just dropped my <laughs> laptop. Oops. Um, but other than that, I do really like using a hairdryer. Um, as mentioned before, when I had a, a gallery show with a bunch of portraits in it, like literally the day of the show, I was completing some of my paintings. And um, I was at my lunch break at work with my students popping in because they, they never let me have personal space. Um, and I was just sitting there with the hairdryer, just trying to dry a few layers of paint. And they're like, haha, you procrastinated, didn't you? And I was like, why you do your homework on time. Time management is important. So, yeah, I have nothing against using hair dryer. Okay, so let's get some more of these shapes in here. All right, I want to get some more of this bluish color and pop glitter in. And we'll see. I apologize for the singing. For some reason, that's like this trait that I picked up. I like sing as I paint, but I sing like what I'm doing. It's, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure how long it's been that I've been doing that. Or is it just that, you know, when I do broadcasts, I do it. I probably do it when I'm alone, but I just suddenly become very self-aware of my annoying habits when I'm painting and on camera. Um, so, got a good question here from Jessica. Jessica says, what watercolor paints and paper am I using? Um, right now I am using Arches paper, the cold press, um, 140 pound, 300 GSM. Um, I'm using a Princeton Velvet Touch brush and the three colors I'm making my mixtures from are Daniel Smith, um, Quinacridone, pink, Daniel Smith, Fallow Blue, the green shade, and M. Graham, Azo Yellow. Those are some of my three absolute favorite colors. And um, the wonderful Tracy Lewis from Instagram, she's the one who turned me on to those colors because I was like, please, 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 please tell me what colors you use. And she's like, okay, these are the colors. And I was like, what? You're, you're letting your trade secrets loose? And oh, she did. Jane 2 says, does the weight matter if you stretch it? Um, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um, like if you are an aggressive painter, you're going to want to use a heavier paper, at least 140 pound, um, because you're, it's a thicker paper. And so if you constantly are like overworking your paper, um, there's less chance that you're going to get like fuzz and, um, accidentally tear through your paper. So if you're a, an abusive artist like me, um, you're going to want to use a heavier grade paper, but um, I know it is expensive. Um, if you do stretch your paper, it, it will, I mean, sometimes you can get away with like the 98 pound, but I just, I can't work with it. Um, I'm one of those people where I'm just like cotton paper, 140 pound or bust, you know, I just, I can't really work with it, but um, like if, if I could afford it all the time, I'm sure I would love using the 300 pound um, paper, but yeah, that, that's really thick and expensive. Um, but I mean, you can drench that stuff and really work it and it will still forgive you. I'm gonna drop some of that in here. I'm being a chatterbox. And always, always, always have plenty of water near you. Um, I find that I will have two to three jars of water near me when I am painting. Um, and if you do have drinking water near you, just drop my iPad again. Um, let's get this a little more obscure. Um, 
just make sure that you um, have it in some sort of container where there's a lid like this uh, so you don't accidentally drink your paint water especially if you're using professional grade paint like with the blues and cobalts and cadmiums like you don't want to put those in your body I can't believe how many times have I dropped my laptop now This is why we don't have nice things. Also, you know, I'm just not the most careful person. So now I have a mixture of the Azo yellow um, with some of that pink. And so I'm starting to pull out like an orange, it's a little bit too intense. So I'm just gonna blot that and pull it up. color into her cheek too and start bringing some more fleshy tones. Okay, so seriously, how many people have like accidentally drank their paint water? Any show of hands? How many people have accidentally put their paintbrush in their tea or coffee? Not on purpose. Then someone on Sketchy was just like, hey, why don't you uh, drink out of a cup that has a lid? And I was like, oh, that's amazing. Lids. Whatever would have heard of it. If you hear any screaming outside, my um, neighbors have their grandchildren over there babysitting today. So it, it's, it's just happy getting to hang out with your grandparents' noises. stand. Sorry for the shaking of the desk. It's a really cool desk that I actually have. It's an edge desk and um, it has like one of those ergonomic kneeling chairs sort of attached to the desk and then the desk itself can like tilt and raise and be put in various angles so everything's like all ergonomic and can help you with like sore neck and back and whatnot. So I always find a Whenever I'm painting, I'm always in like the weirdest positions if I attempt to sit in a chair. <laughs> I end up just like, what? I'm going to start to work on this shadow here. So typically what I do is I just work around my painting. Like I choose a shape and a shadow that I really like. Like some people are, are very linear in their artwork. Um, I focus less on lines and I focus more on shapes, <laughs> which can be defined by lines or defined by variations in texture or variations in color. And look at me, I'm using color. Because I like watercolor. Alright, so she is like, let's see. It's more of like a harder edge on that side but not that hard so I'm gonna let that try a little bit while I soften up this spot here it's like a give-and-take relationship that I have with my paint There I go. I'm starting to sing and make sound effects. Does anybody else do that? Or am I just like a special breed of artist? I don't know. Oh my goodness. Ken, you 
had children drink your paint water. Oh, I guess after a while, it kind of does look like fruit punch or or like iced tea. Yeah, it's a little bit dangerous habit drinking your paint water. I remember hearing like rumors when I was little. That's like why some artists like Van Gogh sort of ooh, went a little nutty because he drank too much of his paint water, was exposed to too many of the chemicals in his paint. Um, I don't know. That's probably not true. There's probably some underlying thing going on there, but well, I digress. It was just a case study for now. I can't exactly meet Van Gogh. Unless I hold a seance. But I'm not into that. <laughs> if anybody is, and you happen to talk to Van Gogh, ask him if he actually drank his uh, paint water. Because, you know, it's not crazy. Alright, for some reason I decided to work on the eye. Remember, unless you're using some sort of like crazy flash photography, like the eyeballs, should not be paper white. Um, you should always have some sort of shadow in them because they are eye balls and they should, you know, have the illusion of the curvature for that. Um, so yeah. I'm just looking at the comments. Oh my goodness. Jennifer, you accidentally put them in your wine. Uh, like, I know there are some people out there that they use coffee and tea as like a medium, but I'm always afraid to do that because the, um, the acidity in it, and I'm not sure like how well the paper is going to react to that. So I don't know. <sighs> yeah. Did you, did you end up drinking it? Did you finish the, the wine after you realized you put your paintbrush in there? Or did you just have to abandon ship and go get a new one? I am curious. These are the burning questions in my head. So yeah, I typically tend to start off my paintings with um, just a wash of wet on wet. And really go for some of those rainbow colors and sort of really plop them on there and let them move around do their thing um, and then after that layer dries um, I'll go in and I'll start to do more details with the um, wet on dry techniques and so I can have the harder shapes um, and that's just how I go I just sort of do the, the larger and then slowly pull it into more detail Okay, I think I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I'm going to use my number four now. Really? Really, Lauren, we're going to Frozen? That's what I get for uh, letting my daughter listen to the Frozen soundtrack while I tucked her in last night. So now I'm just like, into the unknown. The, the like bluish purple there and then I quickly threw in some of my quite awkward on pink and then it's like wow gradient blend together <laughs> I'm not weird no this is normal typical artist behavior why am I talking like Mickey Mouse now I don't know. I'm sorry I'm in a weird mood today maybe I didn't sleep well homeschool my children is finally getting to me. <laughs> I've been really enjoying doing um, the Google Meet sessions with my students <laughs> uh, because I'm an, I'm an art teacher for the public schools and uh, 
just to tease them sometimes because since I'm the teacher and like it's my meeting so they give me the administrative control and I'll just like randomly mute my students it's like I wish I could do that to you in real life but I only do that to the students that like have a good sense of humor and totally would understand that I'm, I'm not being mean to them on no I am kind of being mean to them on purpose well they understand that I'm joking around with them I would never do that to like a student who's really sensitive and would be offended by that because that would be just mean. So, I mean, you always have to know personalities and who you can be mischievous with and who needs a little bit more of a, a gentle hand instruction. And that's really the key to, to teaching art is just knowing your students and earning their trust. Um, I find that once my students, we, we have that basic respect and trust for each other um, and they know that as long as I see them trying, I will stay with them for the ride and, you know, I'll, I'll hold their hands so they can start building on those successes. And then when they do decide to go off and attempt new things, they're, they're less afraid of failure because they know that we can turn it into a teachable moment and that it's part of the process of learning and that as long as they learn something, you know, they don't have to be afraid of failure because you're learning, you're growing. Um, and yeah, it just means, you know what, you're going to have to use a scientific method and make a hypothesis of why this happened, look at the different variables and move on from there and try again. And if you're too emotionally upset by something, then, then maybe take a little break from it for a little bit and then try it again. I believe we have to treat art just like any of the sciences and use scientific method. So that's my style of teaching at least. And honestly, all little kids are just creative little scientists. Usually around like age nine. Maybe they have like a bad experience with art or something like that, but I find, or, you know, they're afraid that it might be uncool in the eyes of their peers or, you know, someone makes fun of something. Somebody gets an insecurity or they're feeling like they need to, to cover up for something else. Then that's when you start losing, lacking the motivation, because I believe that all children are creative little scientists. So yeah, here's a question for everybody. What age did you really um, fall in love with art? And like, do you feel that there was a specific age where maybe you started to experience fear with your projects rather than you know just jumping in? Or have you always been a timid person? Like my son, he's usually pretty timid. Somebody has a motorcycle outside. Um, so he'll be more cautious when he starts things versus my daughter. She's like, <laughs> dives right in. Um, I don't know, I'm just kind of interested in that. Like, when, when does this fear set in? I guess I'm a little bit of a scientist, too. I want to get some purple in there. I'm so not used to painting without like some sort of music in the background. So I guess that's why I get so noisy myself. Love listening to music while I paint. Maybe on the um, sketchy art school, because I know, I think it was Miss Hope who, who was asking Somebody did the, the question of the day asking what you listen to when you paint, what kind of music you like. Um, maybe we should like get together and make a Spotify like sketchy playlist and so we can all listen to each other's music. That would be really fun. Let's do that. Note to self. So another fun question I have is, 
how did you hear about Sketchy and Sketchy Art School? Like, were you referred by a friend? Did, like, you see an app review somewhere? Um, I was introduced to Sketchy by my husband. He, a few, few years back, um, he saw an article, um, I think on Reddit, someone recommended it for people who enjoy doing portraits. Um, and then I joined it and I was like, eh, I don't know. And then, like, I went back to it and just fell in love and just really enjoyed the plethora of um, inspiration to work from in the community. So, that's my story. What's yours? I'm starting to, excuse me, I'm pulling the shape of some of her, some of her shapes are eyelids. What am I doing on time? Let's click on that. Oh, holy cow, I've been painting for 45 minutes. Mm. It's amazing how some people can, or sometimes, like, it doesn't even really matter. I mean, like, some, one person can draw something and have, like, a masterpiece in, like, an hour. And then other times, like, the same person can't eat with me, um, can't, like, finish something for, like, two hours. But, you know, we do what we do. <sighs> Dear Lauren, stop knocking over the things. Knocking over the things. I have to like build a shelf there or something. Or lower my desk, I guess I can do that too. So a lot of people have uh, some great answers for how they were introduced to Sketchy. Oh, Julie, she says that um, just becoming older became more of a perfectionist. And so that's where fear set in. Hey, A. Foster, third grade. That seems to be a magical age. There's a uh, total passion for drawing. Yeah, third graders, that seems to be like a magical time. Let's go over the comments. Oh, Ava, my mom said I loved art since I was three. It's always good to have supportive moms. Okay, so this was, goes to my question of um, how did you find out about Sketchy? Mike says Instagram. Very cool. I definitely enjoy seeing all the Instagram art. Um, K.A. Foster says last year during Inktober. Yeah, Inktober is amazing. Oh my gosh. Inktober challenge is definitely a must. Oh, I've heard of this one too. Brenda says the book, The Artist's Way, has helped uh, work through the fear. Um, yeah, I think I, I have that book somewhere. Somewhere in my pile of books. But yeah, that's a really good one. And I'm happy that you're able to work through it. And don't worry about being a late bloomer. I mean, some people start, um, as Ava said, when they're three years old. Some people don't really find it until later in life. Like, I didn't really take watercolor seriously until maybe when I was 30. So I don't know. It's really Sketchy's fault for me getting back into watercolor. So thank you. Let me go through a few more comments. Linda says that she has always loved creating. So self-criticism in junior high Oh, yeah, that is a really rough time, junior high for everybody, because you just, it's so weird. <laughs> oh, Steve Mitchell from um, YouTube, from Mind of Watercolor, mentioned Sketchy. That's awesome. Thank you. Good to know. And then Hazy Jane said that you're new and uh, followed Franz von Stone. Um, and then definitely after the sketchbook school, I'd heard of that. A lot of people saying that they found um, Franz von Stone. 
another person, Jennifer, says uh, Instagram. Mind of watercolor again. I'm trying to read. I need my glasses. Oh no! <laughs> Can't. I'm sorry. I only know English, so can't really read your comments for uh, Ryan. All right, so I think this is dried. Let me see if I can get that into here. Yeah, I owe Sketchy a lot. Um, if it weren't for Sketchy, I wouldn't have reignited my love of watercolor, um, which means I wouldn't like have gotten my solo show. Um, which like I'm still kind of glowing from them, even though it was a few years ago. And um, my students, they really benefit from my explorations with Sketchy and I constantly use some of the source material from there with them. Kids are going nuts in the background right now. I'm not sure if you can hear them. So yeah, just, I mean, having a drawing habit is just really, really, really good for you. Um, Ryan, did you have a cat walk across your keyboard? Because <laughs> it's just like one run on bit of craziness. Okay, so the shadow, um, not really shadow, but this highlight on her cheekbone is pretty severe, but then gets blended out. Let me move to a larger brush to blend that out. Hello, Victor. Welcome to the broadcast. Who am I? I am Lauren Arno, AKA Icky Sticky Art Star of Sketchy, and I am doing a live painting for a few more minutes. I really have to get the shadow under her jawline. I spent a little bit too much time talking. But don't worry, I will finish this painting and I will post it both on um, Sketchy and Sketchy Art School. I really wanted to get more into her hair because um, before I was really intimidated by painting um, gray hair. But then um, I did a portrait of my father-in-law um, and he has beautiful grayish white hair. And um, then I realized, oh wow, this is really fun. Um, and it was just so in love with drawing. I mean, not drawing, but painting gray hair from that point. Right, so there's a little bit of a shadow here across the bridge. But it's softer as it blends up, so I'm going to definitely have to soften that edge. And I really need to define this shadow under here. Hi Willow, I hear you. Willow's my dog. I am her emotional support critter. She's a very anxious dog. So she constantly like, I can't play hide and seek with my children because uh, the dog always gives away where I'm hiding because like she follows me everywhere. It's kind of hilarious. You want my hair or you a brush hair? Get out! Right, I'm gonna grab a dryer brush. Maybe I can get it out. Cause that's not frustrating. Ah! Got it. <laughs> yes, Victor, I am painting. When I soften the edge, are you just using water on your brush? Linda, yes. When I soften the edge of a shape, 
Um, I, not too much water, because um, then you'll, you'll start to get a blooming effect or you'll push the paint completely in the opposite direction or pull it in the opposite direction. So I know sometimes it just depends on gravity. But yes, I use um, a damp brush with clean water and I just sort of tickle the edge. You don't want to scrub because then you might accidentally lift um, paint off the paper um, or worse yet, damage your paper. So it's just like a little gentle tickling of the edge of a shape if you need to soften it. Um, and Rebecca, uh, yes, this will stay on YouTube um, after we finish the broadcast. Um, we will have it saved to YouTube so you can revisit this at any time you want. So if you want to do some sketching and then paint along with me, not live, <laughs> um, you can do that too. And I'm sorry that I have this like beam in my forehead. You'll get over it. You have to. I commanded it. All right, so let's soften this edge here because I let that get a little too high. There I go, singing again. I'm gonna, while this is still damp, I'm just taking some of the blue violet mixture that I have made. Why am I speaking with that accent? to redefine the shadow here. I'm trying to like speed myself up a little bit. I don't know why I'm being such a slow poke today. Sorry, I'm, I'm giggling. Um, reminds me of a joke that one of my brother's friends said when he was late to a Spanish class. This is going all the way back to when I was a freshman in high school. And he told the Spanish teacher, mind you, this was the last period of the day. Um, he said, I woke up late and I've been having trouble catching up all day. That was his excuse. I like it. Boop. So Diane said that she took art in seventh grade and hated it. I am so sorry about that. Sometimes middle school teachers just can't really control the, the, the craziness that goes on internally and externally with uh, middle schoolers, but um, I'm glad that you are taking up again. Congratulations. Go you. And I apologize um, if I don't get to everybody's comments. Um, sometimes I just get so hyper-focused I forget to look up and see what's going on. But, I mean, like, if you really do have any question that you really, 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 really need to have answered, um feel free to message me at the Sketchy Art School. Um, there is a feature there where you can um, message your teachers and message other users. And that will come up, or you can leave a comment under one of my paintings, but please make sure that like you either message me directly, or if you make a comment somewhere that you make sure that you, um, what's the word? Direct, direct it specifically to me. Um, otherwise I won't see it because um, I don't get notifica notifications unless it's directed towards me. Um, and I don't want to ignore people because it does not feel good to be ignored. I'm really going to sort of accentuate this shadow here on the edge of our lip because I really like it. And then let's go here. How am I doing on time? Um... I have a minute. Um, okay, well, I'm going to go over time because, yeah, that's what I do. So if you want to stay, you can stay. If you need to leave, you know, you can just check in later. But I can't go over too much because it's getting close to dinner time because I got little kids to eat pretty early. that and if I don't eat like every three to four hours I get hangry and that's just not fair to any other human being or living creature when I get hangry because I mean, you won't like me when I'm angry. Right, let's get a pupil in here because she sort of looks a little bit like a zombie. 
Um, Inspiration Susan Colon. That is her name. Um, she has a lot of really amazing pictures. Um, she also did like a little like meditative series um, a while back. I'll have to investigate that because um, I, I think she's a yogi. I think that's how you say like someone who practices yoga and teaches it. I don't know. I don't know these things. I haven't done yoga in years. But I did start up something fun. I started up um, kickboxing because my son and my husband, they do um, MMA um, kickboxing. And my son does um, jiu-jitsu as well. I'm using my hand as a rag. Good thing I'm not using any toxic colors. I mean, I put like the glove on my one hand or the, the sock to prevent like pain exposure to my skin and then here I am just wiping my brush on my hand. Did you guys hear that little bird noise? That's my new little friend, the little couple that's nesting outside my window. They're so cute. I wish I had a really good camera lens so that I could get a picture and post them as inspiration. Really? What are we going to do with me? Just keeping it interesting. Ten imaginary bonus points to anybody gets the reference for Nippo the News. Who knows where that is from? Are there any Bethesda fans out there? So yeah, this entire painting, I've only used three colors of paint, but I've mixed them to get the whole entire spectrum of color that I needed. So limited palette is a way to get um, your work to unify. Whoa, that was way too blue. Um, so you really, you don't have to buy like every single color of paint. You can just work with what you got. And I just made some really cool brown by mixing all three of my colors together. And I'm gonna put that there. And a little bit of it there. A little too much there. Blot you up. I'm so sorry I am in such a mood today. Although in the reference, it's more of like a, a warm tone on her skin, but as far as this piece of paper is concerned, I am in control. We'll add a little bit more warmth right there just to do that. And then because that shadow is so cool, I need to add some more blue here. And then I need to diffuse that edge. I'm about to do something that's a little bit crazy, but as long as you don't overblend, it will be okay. But I'm going to drop in some orange very close to my blue. 
If anybody knows anything about color theory, orange and blue tend not to be the best of friends if you want to keep them nice, intense, and vibrant. So I just dropped it in, tickled it a little bit, and left it. If they decide to play together, they will. If they decide to avoid each other, they will. Let's hope that they avoid each other so that they don't mix and make like a poopy brown or something. But the key um, to getting your colors to stay really intense is to know your color theory and know which colors will will contrast each other by being opposites and make like sort of browns or grays and neutralize each other and which ones are um, going to harmonize with each other and keep intensity. So that is that. Okay, so I think I can go into her eye and start to darken up the uh, pupil because it's dry enough. And then just to get super dark, I'm going to take, I'm going to veer away from my three colors. I just took some Payne's Gray. I'm going to be ever so gently just dab that right there. It is a little bit too intense. I'm going to take some of that Payne's Gray and water it down a little bit. Yeah. Ooh, excuse me. Why did I just wipe my brush on my shoulder? So I'm going to stop right here for now, um, and then let's have a little bit of a chat so that I can answer some questions and drop the laptop one more time, because that seems to be what I'm good at at the moment. All right, so let's get this out of my face, look at that, and uh, let's switch it over to the FaceTime camera. All right. So, um, yeah, this is just pretty much where I'm going to end it for today. I will um, post what I did so far, as well as post once I'm finished on the Sketchy Art School. And I'm going to scroll up. And, okay, I got that one. Okay, really good question here. How long do you wait for something to dry? Um, before you would try to use colored pencils or something, um, you have to let it be completely dry, as in when you touch it, the paper um, would be room temperature. Um, there wouldn't be any sort of coolness to it, no moisture whatsoever, um, and then you can start working with colored pencils over top of it. Um, if you use watercolor pencils, then of course, um, if you need to blend them out, um, you can use not a sopping wet brush, um, but just a damp brush, and then you can do that. So if you want to add mixed media to your watercolor pieces, you really should let it dry completely to when you touch it, um, it no longer feels cool. So that is an excellent question. Boop, 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 going down here. Um, Brenda asked inspiration. Her name is Susan Colon. Um, you can find her on the Sketchy app, and also there should be a link um, down below to the inspiration as well. Um, if you have any issues finding it, you know, you can email me. Um, I've painted her before in the past. Absolutely love painting this woman. Um, cool. To me, Mosley, sorry if I'm botching your name. My paintings don't look anything like you're doing. Uh, that's why I'm amazing. Uh, well, the only reason why I'm good at what I'm doing is because I practice a lot. Um, so yeah, just keep on practicing. And I mean, if watercolor isn't your thing, uh, just continue experimenting with different media. Um, I mean, I would love for charcoal or graphite to be more my thing, um, but I don't really practice at it, so I can't really be good at it. So, I don't know. Maybe Anna Lopez from the, the sketchy app will give me some 
graphite lessons because she's amazing. Oh, thank you, Peter. That's a very wonderful uh, compliment. Okay, um, Clemente or Clemente, uh, you paint landscapes. Awesome. Uh, you're ahead of the game in that area because, like, whenever I paint landscapes, it just doesn't look really that good. So I definitely admire anybody who can do a landscape well. A lot of people from Brazil. I'm glad you love um, painting kawaii France. I think that's how you're supposed to say kawaii. Because I know if you say it another way, like it means something else. Um, like sadness or something like that. I don't know. Okay, going through this. Oh, thank you, Hamid Khan, saying I'm good. <laughs> Jennifer, you would love a third color theory class. Oh my gosh, I'm so obsessed with color theory. I shall work on a class on color theory. Um, Betty asks, when do I usually add the backgrounds? Um, I sometimes start with the backgrounds. Um, if I have like a clear idea of what I want to do with it, like if I'm going to um, do my typical little like floral thing going on, sometimes I'll start with that. Um, other times like probably where I just stopped with this one. Um, let me go back to that. Uh, where I stop with it in, in this phase, sometimes I will add a background um, so I can use it to help cut in and define some of these edges where I sort of let the paint wander. Um, and I'll use the background to help define the foreground. So sometimes I will do that. Um, other times I wait until the end and sometimes I just completely don't put in a background at all. Um, I like doing that a lot when I'm working with, um, what is it called? Aquaboard. Um, yeah, Aquaboard uh, by Ampersand. And I just, I really enjoy the, the white clay surface of that. So I'll leave it. Um, and curious how I do the hair. <laughs> um, typically when I am painting hair, which into picture in picture um, is I will start to go through and um, I will treat it just as I do the skin where I'll put like some washes over it, typically in um, the highlight tone, which her highlight tone is kind of white. So I would have to go to the medium tone um, or value, I should say. Uh, and then after that dries, I will start to cut in some of the, those really deeper shadow areas. Um, and then after doing that, then I'll go through and try to get some of the wisps in there. But typically what I, I treat it just as I do the skin where I will, um, I'm saying um, too much. Where <laughs> I'll just go in and I'll put in some of those medium values and then work in um, more of those defined shapes as the paper dries. So that's typically how I handle hair. Um, Anne asks, have I ever used uh, the Yupo paper? I have. I was extremely frustrated with it. Um, I tried an entire pad of it and ended up uh, giving the last few sheets to my students because I just couldn't for the life of me get into the layering with it because I work in so many layers and I got too frustrated. Although I hear it's really good for alcohol inks. I don't own any of those yet. Um, but no, I was, I was just way too frustrated. So typically I stick to watercolor on 100% um, cotton paper, or I will use the clay boards, um, the aqua boards from Ampersand, which there's definitely a learning curve with them, but I, oh, I love them because unlike paper, um, you can race with them. Like literally you can, you can like scrub them with your brushes, which I don't recommend doing if you're using really good watercolor brushes because it, it breaks the bristles. Um, but like, like I've gotten angry at a painting and completely just wiped it off with a sponge and I was back to the regular surface. So even though they are more expensive, um, it was, it was just totally worth it for me. So, okay. Um, well, I need to end the session now. I've gone 15 minutes over. I eventually <laughs> will finish this painting and I will post um, the progress that I have now, um, as well as the completed painting 
um, on my Instagram. Um, I will post it on the Sketchy app as well as the Sketchy Art School. And uh, Susan, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to be posting and uh, mentioning you a lot. So she's going to get a lot of notifications um, from me. And hopefully she won't mind. <laughs> um, oh, how am I listed on Instagram? My Instagram is Clutter Monster. Um, so you can find me that way. I think um, Sketchy tagged me in their stories. So you can follow that. Or once again, just Clutter Monster, no spaces, anything like that. Um, so yeah, guys, uh, I'm sorry I was in like a goofy mood today. I'm always in some sort of goofy mood. But I really enjoy painting and talking and chatting with everybody. I hope you have a wonderful watercolor Wednesday. And uh, see you all soon. Do not forget about the discount below, the um, buy one, get one 80% off, as well as the reference below. Um, so everybody take care. Stay safe, stay healthy. All right. Bye-bye.